Can you believe the moment has finally arrived for this trial to start? Opening statements will start on Friday, October 18th of 2024. The jury has been selected. They're going to be sequestered the entire time. That's tough as well. And yeah, there's no cameras in the courtroom. Yeah, there'll be no live streaming, no audio recordings, nothing but notes from people in the courtroom. And I'm so grateful for all the people that we know in the true crime community that have traveled there to take notes and to share those with us. Andrea Burkhardt is there, Defense Diaries is there. There's quite a few other content creators there as well. So I'm going to do my best to watch all of them to see what's really going on in the courtroom. Now, if you don't know anything about this case, please check out the description box. There's a little case background write up for you, as well as a link to the playlist that I've made for you. And on that playlist, you'll find videos summarizing the timeline and map time. And obviously we've looked at just about every single document we could get our hands on. I haven't spoken about the case for a few months because it became very repetitive. Honestly, it's the defense asking for something, Judge Gold denying it. And, you know, if the state asks for something, Judge Gold's like, grant it. And it actually the pattern remains the same. It's so crazy at this point that the prosecutor is asking to exclude the sketches. And we're going to look at that document so that you can just see what I mean. It's just unbelievable what's happening in Delphi, Indiana. So this trial, as I say, it's going to last about a month. And unfortunately, we're not going to see any of it. So yes, if you hear anything or see news articles or something, please send it to me because I'm going to be keeping my eye on it all. And I will update you as we go along. I'm also going to have some guests on the show that are in the courtroom that can hopefully tell us you know, from their perspective, most of them are attorneys. What is happening? And is it fair? Is this a fair trial for 52-year-old Richard Allen? Because if it isn't, then there will be no justice for Libby German and Abby Williams. And that has always been my standing. You know, some people take that, they rarely reduce that, okay, minimize it to, you're defending a child killer. I'm certainly not defending a child killer. I am wondering if this is a fair trial and if they have the right guy. I think it's fair to wonder because there's so much reasonable doubt, even to this day, with the defense saying that in one of the victim's hands, in Abby Williams' hands, there was hair, and they actually say hairs, that did not match the DNA of Richard Allen, who's the prime suspect. I mean, all along, the police press conferences and Everything seemed to imply that there was more than one person involved, but now they're like, this is the guy. This is the lone wolf, it's the guy. But there were two sketches, now they want the sketches out as well. It's a lot, okay? So I'm going to try, I've made some notes here for myself, I've got some articles and things to show you in documents, because I'm going to try to just summarize some of the key points of what's happening, okay? So let's do that. Let's start with a jury that's uh, been seated. So the last of 16 jurors were seated Tuesday for the murder trial of a man charged in the Indiana killings of two teenage girls slain in 2017 during a winter hike. 12 jurors and four alternates were chosen Monday and Tuesday in Fort Wayne, Indiana, to hear Richard Allen's trial in the killings of 13-year-old Abigail Williams and 14-year-old Liberty German. So they were chosen in Fort Wayne, Indiana, but the trial's happening in Carroll County, Indiana. Now, Allen, 52, is charged with two counts of murder and two counts of murder while committing or attempting to commit kidnapping in the killings of Delphi, Indiana, eighth graders known as Abby and Libby. If convicted, Allen could face up to 130 years in prison. 
Is he going to get credit for the time he's already spent in prison versus jail? <laughs> no word. In this case, oh my goodness, okay, focus. The jurors will be sworn in on Thursday for the trial in Delphi, a community of about 3,000, some 60 miles northwest of Indianapolis. Opening statements are set for Friday morning. The trial is expected to last a month. The jurors will be sequestered throughout the proceedings, monitored by bailiffs, and banned from using cell phones or watching news broadcasts. So they're staying in a hotel. They can't speak to their family. They can't have electronics. I mean, that's a tough month for them. But this is such an important case. So I hope, I hope it's a good panel, you know, that uh, and that they pay attention because this case is so important. You know, it's it's definitely not the average case. This is okay. So Ellen, a pharmacy technician who had lived and worked in Delphi, was arrested in October of 2022. A relative dropped the teens off at a hiking trail just outside of Delphi on February 13th of 2017, but the two friends failed to show up at the agreed pickup site later that day. They were reported missing that evening and their bodies were found the next day in a rugged wooded area near the trail. Within days, police released files found on Libby's cell phone, two grainy photos and audio of a man saying down the hill that they believed captured the killer. Investigators released one sketch of the suspect in July of 2017 and another in April 2019. They also released a brief video showing the suspect walking on an abandoned railroad bridge. After years of failing to identify a suspect, investigators said they went back and reviewed prior tips. I mean, as Doug Carter always said, but those sketches were such a big deal. And now they're just like, yeah, no, that doesn't, the sketches don't really matter. They don't really, we want those out. The state, the state wants them out. <laughs> I don't really have much hope that the judge will include the sketches in this trial, but I really, I really wish he would so that the jury can just see just how confusing that all is as well. And that uh, law enforcement put those sketches in our face over all these years. And now it's like, nope, that's not important. Wow. Alan had been interviewed in 2017. He told the officer that he had been walking on the trail the day the girls went missing and that he saw three females at another bridge but did not speak to them. He said he did not notice anyone else because he was distracted by a stock ticker on his phone, according to an arrest affidavit. Police interviewed Alan again on October 13th of 2022 when he reasserted that he had seen three juvenile girls during his walk in 2017. Investigators searched Alan's home and seized a 40 caliber pistol. Prosecutors said... Testing determined an unspent bullet found between the teens' bodies had been cycled through Alan's gun. Mm -mm, that's going to be interesting because that could really come down to junk science. If that's all the state has is this unspent round and Alan's dodgy confessions, which includes him saying that he killed his entire family, including his grandkids, when he doesn't even have grandkids. Wow. I'm glad that Judge Gall is allowing all the confessions in, which is what the state wanted. Yeah, I'm glad because they're going to hear so many things that are so inconsistent with the crime scene and also things that make no sense, even in his personal life. I mean, how could one really say his confessions are credible? In the conditions he was in, you know, the prison that he was held in, everything. All of that, we've gone over that before, right? According to the affidavit, Alan said he'd never been where the bullet was found and had no explanation as to why a round cycle through the, his firearm would be at that location. The case is subject to a gag order approved by Allen County Superior Court Judge Fran Goll. My favorite. <laughs> we've seen so many excellent judges in uh, all the trial coverage that we've done. Mm. I think this one is not on our favorite list, okay? And we're not even seeing anything because there's no cameras in the courtroom. The special judge overseeing the trial. Allen's trial has been repeatedly delayed after evidence was leaked. Allen's public defenders withdrew and were later reinstated by the Indiana Supreme Court. Yeah, withdrew. Mm -hmm. We know all about that as well. So there's that, okay? Now let me just quickly look at my notes here. So the jury has been seated. Yes, they have been sequestered. Let's have a look at how many seats there are going to be in the courtroom because even for the sake of transparency, even though we have to rely on people's notes, um, there's limited seats and most people won't even make it in. It's so crazy. So look at this. This is the courtroom decorum order and the seating here says all persons must be seated during proceedings. There will be no standing except for court security and bailiff officers. No person will be admitted unless there's adequate seating. So some people are going to be standing there from like three or four in the morning, or just camping there overnight. I mean, what? There will be designated seating areas for council, parties, families, and credentialed media. 
The defense will be allocated 10 seats. The prosecution will be allocated 10 seats. The families will be allocated 20 seats. The credentialed media will be allocated 12 seats, eight for television, two for radio, two for newspapers. And the general public will be allocated the balance of the seats in the courtroom. If seats are in high demand, media may be limited to one representative from each news organization. During jury selection, there will be a reduced number of seats. So that's now already happened. Okay, And they say all reserved seats will be available on a first come, first serve basis. All right, so we've got that. Now look at this. Let me show you this one about the sketches. This is the state's motion in limine regarding composite sketches. And it's important because there's still going to be evidentiary hearings happening on Thursday, October 17th of 2024, before opening statements start. So the jury's been selected, right? They're going to be sworn in on Thursday. And then they've also, by the way, heard these like many opening statements from you know, the state and the defense, which is new to me. I don't know if I've ever really heard of that. Let me know if you have. I'm like, what? Many opening statements. And that's where this information about one of the victims, uh, Abby, having hairs in her hand that don't match Richard Allen's DNA comes from. It's from these like many opening statements. I'm like, what is going on? It's like fireworks before the trial even starts. The reasonable doubt's already there. Again, the defense is doing a good job, right? So comes now the state of Indiana by prosecutor Nicholas. Isn't it C. McClelland? Nicholas M. McClelland? Did it change his middle name? <laughs> okay. For the 74th Judicial Circuit and respectfully request that the court enter an order prohibiting the admission or reference to the composite sketches. You guys, <laughs> the, the prosecutor doesn't want the sketches in. Prepared by any sketch artist for the investigation of the murders of Abigail Williams and Liberty German for the reason that a composite sketch is not relevant Admission would result in undue prejudice, confuse, or mislead the jury. Mm, you mean create reasonable doubt because that's not Richard Allen? Or is impermissible hearsay and hearsay? Then why was it at every press conference? Why did Doug Carter go on about it so much? Oh my word. And the witness who participated in the preparation, and why is it why, oh, witnesses? Okay, witnesses who participated in the preparation of composite sketches will not be presented by the state for the purpose of in-court identification of the defendant. Mm-hmm. Because this is the, the older guy with the hat, and then there's this young guy. And which one is Richard Allen, really? In support of this motion, the state would show the court the following. The composite sketches prepared were intended as an investigative tool to generate leads to identify a suspect. And in fact, these sketches were not related to the identification of Richard Allen as a suspect. Right, okay. Therefore, the sketches would not be relevant. Well, no wonder the one sketch had poofy hair. I mean, Richard Allen has always had a buzz cut. According to his wife, right? Okay, because he was in the military as well. So, that the witnesses who assisted in the preparation of composite sketches of the bridge guy would testify that they did not see the person depicted in their sketch for a sufficient length of time to allow them to positively identify the defendant. Therefore, again, under this Indiana evidence for one, the composite sketches are not relevant evidence. Oh, my word. I just can't believe, like, wow, like two days before opening statements, before this trial is really about to kick off, they're like, you know what? Those sketches, they're not relevant, okay? Excuse me. My goodness. That if the court, I don't, I don't think they are. I've always wondered about those sketches. If Richard Allen is the guy, then damn, what are those sketches all about? <laughs> it's absolutely crazy, right? I laugh because it's ridiculous, not because the case isn't very, very sad. Now, that if the court were to consider the composite sketches to be relevant, the probative value is substantially outweighed by the unfair prejudice, confusing the issues and misleading the jury, and therefore should be excluded under that code. A composite sketch reflects the police artist's interpretation of someone else's description based on the artist's synthesis of an infinite variety of facial features and configurations. Creating a composite sketch carries a potential suggestiveness of having a police artist interpret and possibly influence the perceptions of the witness. That the composite sketches would be hearsay or double hearsay, in that the sketch is an out-of-court statement and a subjective rendering by one person using the subjective description by another person or witness and does not fall within a recognized exception. It's the state's belief that the defense intends to use composite sketches from the investigation, well, yeah, okay, as uh, demonstrative, demonstrative evidence and for impeachment purposes. Again, uh, that would be quite plausible. <laughs> that the witnesses who participated in the preparation of composite sketches are not being called to provide in-court identification of the accused. Furthermore, no composite sketch was instrumental in identifying Richard Allen as a suspect. You know, 
I need to find those clips. Oh my goodness, I've got to be like, it's uh, you remember sketches, not a photograph, but if you put them together, oh my. That the prejudicial effect of composite sketches far outweighs the probative value for in-court identification of the accused and would likewise be inappropriately used to impeach a witness who is not presented before the jury to provide in-court identification of the accused. That Indiana courts have not addressed this issue or use of composite sketches. Indiana courts have excluded composite sketches that resulted from the use of victim or witness hypothesis. Other Indiana cases discuss or mention the existence of a composite sketch in the course of an investigation leading to probable cause to arrest, but no analysis of their use as evidence to impeach witness testimony. Wherefore, the state of Indiana, by, see, there it's see, by prosecuting attorney Nicholas C. McClelland, requestfully, respectfully requests this court to grant the following relief. And we know how Judge Gold rolls. She's going to grant this, isn't she? Oh, my word. Order the defendant, his counsel, and witnesses to refrain. Okay, so they are to refrain from commenting or making any reference whatsoever, either directly or indirectly, to composite sketches without first obtaining permission of the court outside the presence and hearing of the jury. B, to further order said persons to make no reference to the fact that this motion has been filed and granted and all other relief just and proper in the premise. Um, so, now the defense is not only allowed to, of course, I understand that, not talk about third-party involvement, meaning the Odinist angle. They're not allowed to bring that up at all. Then they're also not allowed to talk about the sketches. Okay. There's actually many things that they have been banned from talking about. So had, remember, we went over the whole list of their like trigger words that they're not allowed to say in the courtroom. So basically, they're not allowed to have a defense. And yet, ooh, the defense attorneys are still, they're fighting hard for their client, of course. And my goodness, I'm just... I just really think the state is quite a weak case, in my opinion. Maybe more evidence will come out. Maybe we'll hear about some absolutely jaw-dropping evidence. It's like, whoa, imagine if, you know, okay, so he's the guy. I can accept that. I'm not here to be like, you know, Richard Allen is absolutely innocent and he's not, I don't know. I just think there's so much reasonable doubt. I'm very concerned about how things have been going. I'm very concerned about him having a fair trial or not, because if there isn't a fair trial, as I say, then there isn't proper justice for the victim. We want truth. We want the truth, and I really hope the truth will come out during this trial, right? So I really honestly wouldn't be surprised either way. I'll keep you posted, as I say. Now, let's look at a few other updates. Okay, so let's go over this DNA information. It's just, it's brand new information after seven and a half years that the defense has brought up. Now, so defense lawyers for the suspect in the so-called Delphi murders have claimed that hair found in the hand of slain Abigail Abby Williams' hand did not match the suspect's DNA. Now, I wonder if it meant, does it mean the DNA was, you know when they say it's inconclusive, right? Or there wasn't enough of it, but that's difficult. It's a hair, I mean, or hairs, actually. They've said hairs in multiple sources here. So is that the case, or is it somebody else's hair? And if it's somebody else's hair, whose hair is it? Oh, man, I've seen so many theories now. I've seen the cat being brought up again. <laughs> Richard Allen's cat has been brought up again, and then that some say it's a female's hair, some say it's male hair, some say it's reddish hair. I mean, it's a lot. So I would love for that to be cleared up in this trial. You know, if that's what the if if that's what the defense is saying, then hopefully they have evidence to back up that claim. Like whose DNA was it, or do they just not know? But if it isn't Richard Allen's, well, again, we've got more reasonable doubt. Richard Allen, 52, is charged with the murders of Abby, 13, and Liberty Libby German, 14, whose bodies were found near Delphi, Indiana, in 2017. Now, the rest of this timeline, we know, right? The startling DNA claim was made on Tuesday by defense attorney Andrew Baldwin during many opening statements, you see there that is, as jury selection in Allen's long-awaited trial came to a close. Opening statements are expected to begin on Friday at the Carroll County Courthouse in Delphi. On Monday, Carroll County Prosecutor Nick McClellan filed a motion to ban. <laughs> he wants to, he filed many motions to ban many things. Okay, he wants to gag the defense basically and just let him have his day in court. Okay, two police sketches of the suspect from proceeding, citing concerns that they could be used to sway the jury. Yeah, quite easily actually. I'm just saying, like based on everything, based on all the reasonable doubt, I think that the defense has a lot to work with there. Now, again, the timeline we have uh, gone over already. 
Okay, we talked about the bridge guy, the second sketch, the composite sketch. We've just gone over the documents as well. So they said a hearing will be held on Thursday in Allen County and Special Judge Francis C. Gull will rule on the admissibility of the sketches. So, wow, yeah, look at him. Look how he was when he was first arrested. And, I mean, look at this now. He looks very different now, doesn't he? My goodness. Sure. Okay, so Alan's lawyers maintain his innocence and have suggested the two teenagers died at the hands of a white nationalist pagan cult, adding the girls were killed as part of a ritualistic sacrifice by a group of Odinists. The attorneys have been banned from mentioning the cult during the trial. Alan told investigators that he was on the bridge uh, the trail that day that the girls vanished, but he has pleaded not guilty to the charges. His family home is less than a five-minute drive away from where the bodies of Libby and Abby were found. McClelland states that the defense intends to use the sketches, you know, as we've just gone over the documents, and he doesn't want that. Wow. All right. So Libby and Abby went missing February 13th of 2017. Just think about it. We're in 2024 when this trial is happening now. Libby managed to capture grainy video on her phone of a man dressed in blue jeans, a blue jacket and cap walking along the abandoned railroad bridge. It's thought that the man in the footage could be the girl's killer, but it is also implied throughout the police press conferences, which, by the way, I have a Delphi case file for you. You guys, if you've been here for a while, you know I like to make case files, and it's all the chronological media interviews and press conferences, and those are always interesting to watch, especially in hindsight, right? So in the footage, the man can be heard telling the girls, go down the hill, guys, down the hill. Officials determined they suffered wounds caused by a sharp object, which is also why, if you don't know much about this case, this unspent round, and then these weird confessions, <laughs> which includes so many that don't make sense. If that's all the state has, okay, where is the sharp object? Where is proof of that? I don't know. We'll have to see what comes out in this trial. A bullet that has not been fired was found by their bodies, leading investigators to believe a gun played a, played a role in the crimes as well. Now, of course, as we've spoken about many times, the gun could have been used to control these teenagers, to scare them so that they go down the hill and follow instructions, right, from the kidnapper. Where did that kidnapper lead them to? Were there other people there? I don't know. They're also saying that at 3.30, what well, they're saying now, okay, based on what's coming out of the courtroom in everybody's notes, is that the killer went with the girls across the creek and then was like interrupted, like spooked at 3.30 p.m. because somebody in the area came home and that then they, the, the killer decided to kill them and scurry off. There's so much on my word. Now, let's look at this other stuff. The defense plans to call Kagan Klein. Kagan Klein. Wow. Okay. Carol, that will also create reasonable doubt if they ask him. So why did, what were you talking about? Because he was the last person to speak to Libby German that day. Okay. And he said that he was waiting in a red Jeep by a gas station while somebody else committed the murders. Like, this guy is a pathological liar, so pretty much when his lips move, he's lying. But if the defense is able to ask him questions like that, wow, that could also create a lot of reasonable doubt for the jury, right? They say the man behind an online persona that preyed on underage girls and contacted Libby German the night before her death will take the stand during the Delphi murders trial, which is scheduled to commence next week. Before Richard Allen was arrested and charged with the deaths of Abby Williams and Libby German in 2022, convicted child predator Ken Klein was thrust into the Delphi murder spotlight after police learned that the Peru man was behind a social media account called Anthony Schatz. Under this false online persona, Klein contacted numerous underage girls and manipulated them into sending sexually explicit images and videos. Klein ended up being sentenced to 43 years in prison after pleading guilty to 25 felony counts, including child exploitation and child solicitation. While Klein was never officially named a suspect in the murders of Abby Williams or Libby German, investigators did uncover that German interacted with the Anthony Schatz account shortly before she was killed. Well, there's a lot of coincidence in this uh, case as well. So Klein has been at the center of numerous online conspiracies surrounding the high-profile murder case and is now set to appear in court during the trial as Alan's defense team named Klein as a witness whom they intend to call to the stand. Klein is but one of several current inmates the defense will call. They're calling four inmates. Oh my word. You see, I forget about all these updates that I see on a daily basis. They're going to be calling Ken Klein and three others to the stand. They're also going to be calling Doug Carter, Mike Patty. All these names. You should know if you know the case, right? So uh, the jury selections already happened. Then look at this one. Wait. 
remember the name Todd Click? Oh my word, he was one of the investigators that was continuing to investigate this Odinist angle. Well, he was arrested right before the trial, which some say, well, you know, let's let's read what he's been arrested for. Of course, that's caused some concern for people like, why right before the trial? <laughs> So that he can't testify, you know what I mean? Okay, so, but they're not allowed to talk about that anyway, right? Now, an expected key defense witness in the Delphi murders trial has been arrested on charges of forgery. Ripley County authorities have charged Todd Click 51 with forgery, official misconduct, and obstruction of a child abuse assessment. Click worked as a, D as a DCS and family case manager from July 2023 to March of 2024. Investigators allege that Click falsified at least 10 magic entries and forged the signatures of parents or caregivers on at least seven DCS forms required in the assessment process. Magic Management Gateway for Indiana Kids is a DCS case management system. The case started with a complaint forwarded to the Indiana Office of Inspector General. While I have no information that his complete disregard for DCS policy and children's safety caused an actual harm, these crimes put at least five Ripley County families and 11 children in danger because he failed to perform his duties as he was trained. Michael Lepper, special agent with the Indiana Office of Inspector General, wrote in the warrant seeking Click's arrest. So if he did all that, yeah, okay, hold him accountable. <laughs> Just like the timing. The timing is so crazy. Now let me show you a video clip. Okay, so let's hear what this reporter has to say about what's happening in the courtroom. And good afternoon. Over the course of two days, four selected jurors were then cut loose, excused, one of them for family reasons, one of them for health reasons. That's why we had the extended jury selection process. We now have 12 jurors, four alternates, the jurors and their backups. They've been sent home Wednesday as a day off from this court before they pack their bags and they head for Delphi and Lafayette on Thursday prepare themselves for Friday morning's opening statements and first witnesses in the murder trial of Richard Allen. Richard Allen's defense team showed up at the Allen County Courthouse this morning and they were prepared to find a jury willing to believe there is reasonable doubt that their client killed Abby Williams and Libby German near the Monon High Bridge during a day off from school in February of 2017. The state's contention is well known that Allen is Bridge Guy, the suspected killer whose image was captured on Libby's cell phone. And that investigation found a bullet from Allen's gun at the murder scene. Plus, it claims that Allen has confessed to the murders more than 60 times, including that he was interrupted during the killings. That's new information. But during the defense presentation to the jury pool this morning, we learned also more new details that not only did Allen claim some murder details that don't exist, he also confessed to killing his family and grandchildren, which clearly never happened. And also, investigators found hair, presumably from the killer, clutched in Abby's hand. But that hair didn't come from Richard Allen. His attorneys are trying to lay the groundwork of a false confession defense based on Allen's deteriorating mental health condition and his time awaiting trial in solitary confinement in a maximum security state prison. As we said, tomorrow's going to be a day off. The judge brings that jury back here to the Allen County Courthouse first thing Thursday morning, swears them in, puts them on the road, and while that jury is on the road two hours west of here, the judge will hold evidentiary hearings on both sides from both the prosecution and the defense about some of the evidence that is bound to come up in this trial, including some information we just found out that the defense is challenging those two sketches that we've all seen that came from state police. One of an older man in a slouch hat, the younger, another one, a younger man with curly black hair. Those descriptions came from witnesses on the bridge that day in 2017. The judge on Thursday morning will hear arguments about whether or not to exclude that information. In the court, we know certainly this has gone a little quicker than was originally anticipated. Uh, is it one of those things where both sides are now happy with the makeup or the, of the jury, or is it one of those situations where if neither side is completely happy, then there's a sign of a we're going to be in the ballpark where we want to be here? Well, I think what we found from listening to the attorneys from both sides, the prosecutor and the defense, in the way they question these juries, 
this, the, uh, these potential jury members, the state was saying, do you think that the state needs to have, for instance, conclusive DNA, conclusive fingerprints, a conclusive murder weapon to get a decision of guilt beyond reasonable doubt? Perhaps that indicates that maybe the state doesn't have all that information buttoned down. From the defense side of it, it elicited several comments from some of the prospective jury members, some of them health care professionals, that said, you know what, somebody under incredible stress, such as Richard Allen sitting in a state prison for the last two years, somebody under incredible mental and psychological stress is likely to say anything, maybe even confess to a crime he didn't commit. And so I would say just hearing those types of reactions from potential jurors, that would bode well because remember, the Richard Allen defense team, it would love an acquittal. It doesn't have to win a total acquittal. What it needs, at the very least, is a hung jury, one out of 12 jurors who will say, I don't find him guilty, at least so that Richard Allen and his defense can live to fight another day, assuming they get through this prosecution, which begins later this week in Carroll County. All right, Russ McQuaid, thank you so much. As we know, the trial... Okay, so there's those updates as well. There's many more, as I say. Let me just quickly go over my notes here. So the jury's been seated. We've gone over the seats in the courtroom. The Todd Dick was arrested. Oh, there's also what's going to be heard is that <laughs> Nicholas McClelland, the prosecutor, does not want the jury to go out and view the scene. The defense would like that to happen. So let's see what Judge Gall decides about that. The state is saying, well, it's changed because, you know, they renovated the area quite a bit. But uh, I still think it will be a worthy exercise. We've spoken about the sketches as well, the hair found in Abby's hand, allegedly, and Richard Allen's confessions. Now, as I say, I could sit here and we could go over another 50 documents and so many updates and things. I think those are some key points for now to consider. And I'll do my very best to stay on top of the news, of course, by just watching what all these journalists and reporters and YouTubers are going to say about what's happening in this trial. So I'll be making YouTube shorts and community posts and things like that to keep you posted. And as I say, I'll be having some guests on the show as well that are in the courtroom. Many of them are legal professionals so that we can actually hear, like from the horse's mouth at least, what's happening there. And do they think it's a fair trial so far? What's the evidence that's presented? What do all these key witnesses say? Doug Carter, Mike Patty, you know, all the family members that will take the stand. This is going to be a very tough month, of course, for the family members. We put the family members first in every case. It's about the victims and their families. And so sometimes people think of it in a very black or white way that if I'm you know, questioning that if this is a fair trial or not, that I'm not on the family side. I am. <laughs> By wanting a fair trial, you know, and wanting either the right person to be arrested or whoever else needs to be arrested to be arrested, as we say in other cases, right? Is anyone else going to be arrested? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of Madeline Soto's case right now. The point is that whatever it may be, so that there's full justice for the victims is, of course, what we all want. I think we can agree on that, right? So I really... I'm really invested in this case. I still am. I always have been. I'm following all the updates. It's just sometimes you just feel like you're, <laughs> you know, your head is on a swivel. You're looking everywhere because there's so many crazy updates. So let's see what happens from Thursday, for example, right before opening statements start on Friday. What will the judge decide? Will the jury be allowed to go and view the scene where all of this happened? Can they walk the trail? Can they see the bridge? Can they just get a grip of it like that? Uh, the prosecutor is saying no because, of course, they've got drone footage and all sorts of things, which is also very helpful. But let's see. Let's see what evidence the state has. Because obviously what we as the public have heard so far isn't all that strong, in my opinion. You know, I know the argument is, but he says he was there that day. He says he was there wearing that and all of that. I, I hear arguments from both sides. For me, I'm just concerned about everything we've already spoken about. Let's not go over all that again, right? Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you didn't know about any of these updates and if you follow me on X, I often repost lots of the Delphi updates on there. I would recommend following Andrea Burkhart. I will link her channel in the description box because her notes are so detailed and she's got so much legal experience that it's really great to just listen to 
her perspective of what's going on and her concerns and, you know, even the reason that she decided to pack up her things and go and stay in Delphi for over a month to watch this trial. I wish all the people so much strong coffee, lots of luck, okay, they're going to need it because to get into that courtroom and actually get a seat, it sounds like it's going to be quite a mission. So I wish them all, everyone who's there, I know Defense Diaries is there as well, I think Truth and Transparency is there, I can't remember which other content creators are there, but there's quite a few. I hope that they all get a seat because the more eyes on this case, the better, seeing as we, the public, will not be able to see it. And I do think that that is a tragedy, especially in a case like this. This is a case that desperately needs the transparency, especially at this point. There's, a ma there's many, many things that, are, that have been very questionable leading up to this point. All right, everyone. So as you can see, I could talk about this for a while, but I'm going to leave it there and I'll keep you posted. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe.